Welcome back. Maybe. So can we just pause for a minute and see how beautiful the T-38 is? That's one of my favorite airplanes. Yeah, it's beautiful to look at, not from the inside, though. <laughs> the article is about 900 airmen who are waiting in the pipeline to start flying airplanes for training. They've been waiting around three months in some cases, and they're having this. I don't know about you guys. You can speak to this, but for me, this seems like it would be a big letdown. They're being taught how to do aircraft maintenance, put them on the flight line, <laughs> marshal aircraft in and park, get them connected to the mission. So the hope they're kept gainfully employed. The T-38 Talon in particular used to train fighter, future fighter and bomber pilots is frankly struggling. Production ended in 1972. So the article said that the, the training aircraft are at least 20 years old, but 1972 is a lot longer than that. That's military 20 years old. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's <laughs> government well, okay. 20 years. The T-6 too, right? <laughs> so the T-6 is pushing 20 years. That might be what they're is talking it about. Already? Jeez. They're yeah, waiting on the T-7. 2000, early 2000s. So I'll throw that on the floor for you gentlemen, so to speak. This All right, isn't so, really anything different, right? I mean, this is... No. no I'm, not, it, I'm not saying... Yes and no. I mean, so did casual, you guys ever get stashed? Casual lieutenants are... Well, no, I was a reservist, so... I oh, chose. Yes. Donkey, did you path. get stashed before you started? No. So casual lieutenants are a thing because I've got buddies that I went to pilot training with that uh, we can take that down, Douglas. I'll do it for you. I went to UPT. Uh, Deuce was one of them. He actually hung out with the aggressors uh, at Nellis, you know, and that was a very common thing back then mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, you didn't. Now, I'd never heard of PA and usually they try to keep you some flying related thing, but. It doesn't surprise me. And actually, I'm not going to say it's bad that they go to maintenance because you're not flying. Go learn and go learn, go learn about the people, you know, that way you appreciate the jet even more. And it gives you that breadth of experience, the depth that you need to be a good officer. So I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. What I will say, and this is the thing that pisses me off about this article is that the T-38 was outdated 40 years ago. Or, or more. It never was, you know, it's a Century Series trainer, you know, so F-100s, whatever, you know, small wings. And then instead of continuing our, our timeline for development, we just said, okay, we're going to put new avionics in it. And then it took them a while to put new seats in it. Dude, that jet, when I flew it, you know, and this, I'm old, right, 2007, it had new avionics, but an old seat. The same seat you and I flew, Gonky. And, you know, and that's a put the parachute on your back and you get thrown out. And then you do your, the parachute does its thing. Yeah. But, oh yeah, yeah. I mean. That's like, a t that's like a tweet, right? That's how it's tweet. Yeah, I mean, it's very similar. And so, you know, it's not a good seat or it wasn't back then. Now it's a little bit better. But it's, it's. It's a good trainer for skills. Like it'll make you a good pilot, right? I mean, it's it's hard to fly, but as far as efficiently making you a good pilot, I don't think so because it hasn't simulated what our nation flies for 50, 60 years. I mean, it was almost obsolete, you know, within 10 years of being out there. And instead of spending the money, so now we run into the situation that okay, it's outdated. I get that. But now it's outdated, plus it's a 67-year-old airplane. And the airframes, the engines are having problems. The airframes are having, like, we have so many, I mean, it, on the flip side, it's worked, right? It's, it's, it's worked because it's very simple and there's not a lot of systems and stuff like that. But we have done such a poor job of developing a new trainer that now we're at the T7 and the T7 is just now, you know, they're just doing their first flights and whatever. And look how far thing, that was behind. Some point down the road, and we know why the military industrial complex is why, but at some part down the road, we lost the ability to develop something quickly or adapt something quickly. Even the T6, the T6, they didn't, you know, clean sheet design that they took, they went to Pilatus and said, okay, well, we're going to do that, but then we're going to go to, uh, was it Raytheon and, uh, beach, you know, and they were like, okay, we're going to call it the T6. It'll be made in America, but it's based off of this. Like we've lost the ability to make anything fast. We've lost the ability to make anything, you know, reasonably efficient and cost effective. So when we have these shortages, we we're all like, well, T-38 is broken. What are we going to do? I don't know. Let's change your pilot training altogether. I mean, come on. 
you know, we should have had this 20 years ago, 30 years ago. The article also uh, talked about the pilot shortage, right? Them not being able to to make pilots. And, you know, I, I'm having experienced uh, that organization, I would say they have a... Uh, <laughs> they have a problem with losing talent more than they have a problem of gaining and training talent. Everything you said is hundred percent valid mover, but uh, you know, for the exact same reason that all pretty much all the branches are going to miss the recruiting numbers this year is the exact same reason why the air force can't keep pilots. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, that's that's our own views and doesn't represent the the DoD. But yeah, you're right. You're right, Gonky. I mean, you've got and there are people working on this, so it's it's not like they don't know. There's both ends. There's actually all three. I was corrected on this. I talked to a friend of mine who does this like every day. It's not just production. It's not just retention. But then the middle pipeline of training and, um, sorry, recruiting production retention production is a problem too because they either no experience not enough experienced ips that's the retention thing because people aren't sticking around not enough uh jets you know the t38 thing we just talked about t6s have had ejection seat problems they've had all kind of problems and it's it's the butterfly effect one little thing can like this pipeline is like a house of cards and when one little thing ripples it can ripple throughout the entire system and then they make a change two years down the road and then a new ripple happens and they just fix the old ripple. And now we're, we're in this constant, this thrash because, you know, people aren't happy. Jets aren't happy. Well, and, I mean, <clears throat> you talked about why does it take 10 years to bring up? Oh, it takes more than that. 10 years would be optimistic. No, no, but I'm saying like, okay, why does it take 15, 20 years to bring a, a primary trainer online? like a T6 yeah. when the airplane basically already existed. Right. Um, so like it's that same bu bureaucracy. Yeah. But a different flavor, you know, it's like, why, why can't, why can't trained aviators just do their job? Like I, I, jo I personally joined for one reason as a fly airplanes dude. And like, I, I don't, it blows my mind when they're like, Oh, we can't, we can't, keep pilots there's a fighter pilot shortage there's a pilot shortage in general and it's like you can kick and scream at the top of your lungs like, yeah, I'll, I'll fly it <laughs> you know um and there's there's hundreds of guys like me and yeah, they, they I, just like ah no you uh you don't have these you know you didn't do this you don't have this box checked it's like dude this is all just bureaucracy but you know they're they're win willing to flush the billions of dollars of human capital down the drain and then they wonder why, hey, we got a void to fill. Oh, we can't fill. Then on the front end, like you said, so I guess, you know, three-part problem on the front end. They're like, well, we don't, we actually don't have the capacity to do this. And oh, by the way, our airplane is 50 years too old. I mean, it's, uh, I, I kind of think they make, you know, they they get a sleep in the bed they made. You know, that sounds a little harsh, but I mean, that's Well, until it affects readiness. I mean, that's yeah, and like, it is. who loses, the American taxpayer. Yeah, it, it. I mean, it, it. It absolutely does. That's why they're they're writing articles about it, trying to bring yeah. light. And like you said, good people are trying to fix it. But um, I don't know it's tough. Machine, yeah, the it, machine, it, dude. And well, there's also of the machine is we we live in a system where we're always competing against each other for promotions. So it's who's got the good idea. It's the good idea fairy, right? I will, you know. Oh, I've got this great idea. We're gonna change. You know. UPT this way. We're going to change UPT that way. And it's like, dude, the system, it worked. Like, why are we fixing things just so you can have an OPR, Officer Performance Report, bullet? You know, like the, that that whole promotion system by itself doesn't accurately refre reflect a tactical <laughs> aviator or an aviator that, you know, or an aviator in general. It's not made because everybody's got to be fair and we've got to compete against people that don't fly airplanes. And it's like, dude, this is, this is, I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it fairly stacks any, any job. I mean, you could read the bottom guy and like, you know, a, a civilian who reads the OPR or what do we call it in the Air Force or in the Navy? Fair fair rep. Rep. You could read the bottom guys like 
uh, main body like of what's written of what he's done in the past year. You're like this guy is on track, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, he's actually our worst dude. <laughs> yeah. well, well, and that's the thing is, is like we've got a priority problem. Uh, Popping on keys tonight. Uh, we've got a priority system issue, right? We, we, it's. I think it comes back to the roots. I don't know. Does the Navy have this problem? Because I was going to say yes. it could come down. Yes, to the roof. yes, whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, because I was going to say that could be an Army thing. You know, I mean, the roots of the Army Air Corps from the Army. The Army doesn't trust its people. You That's know, true. it's it's very directive. It's very you know. Well, we need to make sure you know we've got these levels and layers and get mom, Mother May I versus the Navy. In my experience, which is more, you're an officer. You're going to be held to that level of accountability, but you're also going to be expected to make those decisions. I'd agree with that, generally speaking. Sure, yeah. I'll agree. Okay, well, that sucks, but I don't think it's that unusual. I mean... I do miss flying the 38, Doug. I think it's a good-looking airplane, like you said. It is a good-looking airplane. I just think that it doesn't train you... People will argue with me because they'll go, well, you know, it's a it's a harder, harder jet to fly, which makes you a better pilot, but... I will also say, because we're about to get to, we'll talk about the UPT 2.5 next, but it's, I think in the progression of how you're training, your most difficult trainer should be the, you know, early on. And then by the time you get to the advanced, it should be more preparing you for the next jet. So you can go solo your F-35. Like, I don't think you need a jet that necessarily has the issues that you'll never run into in an F-35 or an F-16 or an F-15. Like, in that case, you're needlessly putting people at risk and students at risk. Yeah, so basically you need more of a weapons platform trainer vice an airplane. Right, because by the time you get to that phase of pilot training, it's no longer about how to fly. It's about how to tactically move at the speed of a jet yeah. You know, move move your mind forward at 300 knots versus 150, 200 knots, 350 knots, whatever it is. It's moving faster and working systems. That's yeah. the trainer. You don't need to worry about the buffet. You don't need to worry about, you know, the final turn stall killing you anymore. This is flying an airplane in a tactical environment where flying is secondary. It's employment. That's 100. Dude, because I flew the T-45A, which is just like the T-38A that we flew, all steam gauges. When I when I got to the Hornet, I, I remember the they're like go to your uh, whatever data sub level, and I I just I, I literally said what is a sub level? Like what are you talking about? Am, am I sitting in an airplane? And I mean it was man the learning curve was yeah. steep because like you know the T forty five is all flying and the Hornet it's all you know it's like ten percent flying and ninety percent pushing buttons for uh, weapons right so but yeah well s- systems management you know that's yeah. that becomes the part that's going to kill you when you start getting in these because dude the, the viper's easy to fly you know i'm sure uh deuce was on here he was talking about the f-35 is the easiest jet he's ever you know he's had his best landing ever in the f-35 the jets are not tough to fly what is now causing mishaps is systems management where they don't know what mode they're in you know am i an auto throttle apc whatever that is now the problem. And a T-38 is never going to give you that because it's okay, you know, left, right, up, down. Like it, it does what you ask it to do because it's all mechanical linkages and hydraulics and, you know, the jet's doing whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's Gawky's internet. I think we can't, um, we can't use I don't want to go, no. To get back to, to just finish this thing before you move on to what you're about to talk to, um, put the banner up. You might as well, because as soon as I start talking about this stuff, um, this 100%, in my opinion, can be attributed to the fact that we promote piss poor leadership 90% oh. of the time. Um, and I can prove it because in 2012, when I joined uh, Trey Wing One in Meridian, I remember talking to one of the skippers in one of the, you know, VT7, VT9. He had just gotten back from PERS, right? So the Bureau of Personnel. And they brought up, does this 2012, 2013 timeframe? 2012 they were bringing up the airlines starting to hire. And, you know, he, as a skipper of the squadron, was very concerned about losing instructors, losing readiness, right? Not everything we're talking about right here, right? Not being able to get people through the pipeline. And the admiral in charge said, we don't see that as a problem. 
I remember and now, that. And look, and look forward on how that worked out, right? 2014, all of a sudden, every airline started hiring, right? It went nuts. I remember. Well, and I remember talking to my dad about that. And I was like, can you believe this guy? Like, he's in charge of personnel. And he doesn't see it as a problem. And my dad, as much as I give my dad a hard time, he said something that will never, I'll never forget this. He goes, you misunderstood what the Admiral said. And this is fundamentally what is wrong with our military and the bureaucracy right here. Keep the banner up because I don't want you guys getting in trouble for this. What the Admiral said was, is we don't see that as a problem. What he meant was, I don't see that as my problem. Because by the time the actual floodgates opened, he was going to be done with that job, right? So True. the problem is now you take promoting piss poor leaders that were the were the box counters and all this to these positions, but now they're dealing with people that left them problems that they didn't see as their problem. You have the culmination of both of those, and that's why we don't have trainers that are worth a damn. You have people backlogged, and it trickles down into morale, the guy that – wants to stay in, but he's like, you know what, dude, screw this. I don't want to do this anymore. I got buddies who are getting out and making what at the airlines. I'm done. So now you have a retention problem and it all ties into that. In my opinion, it's, it's the bureaucracy and the, and the promoting the wrong people. Well, part of the wrong promoting, Well, part of it too, is you're promoting people that have checked the boxes. Correct. Right. Cause you put all these like, well, we need to have a master's degree. You need to do air command and staff college. You need to do that. So you go do Air Command and Staff College and the assignment's like, okay, we want you to go to this discussion board and we want you to post an article and you get 50 points for posting the article and 20 points for responding to somebody else's article. And you go read through all the articles and they're all pretty much the same. And all the comments look like drones have responded because it's like fascinating. You said this and I think this is great. And then the next guy, that's interesting. You said this, and I think this. That's fascinating. Like it's like you have to use these this word salad of stupid stuff, and it's like, where's the critical thinking? You know, where's the actual anymore, where's the best. actual leadership of hey, here's how you deal with an airman with a, a mental health issue, with a mental health crisis. How do you deal with somebody who's suicidal? How do you deal with somebody who just had a problem at home? Because you're a babysitter when you become a commander. You're dealing with 100%. all the problems of your people to try to keep them going. You're dealing with the strategic and tactical levels of how do I keep my squadron ready for the fight? How do I keep the airplanes flying? How do I keep my people motivated? How do I keep them wanting to do that? Not, you know, is China our next existential threat? No. The squadron commander, dude, that's not your, that's not your wheelhouse. <laughs> And whether or not you think an article is interesting or not, who cares? Teach me how to deal with people. Mm -hmm. Teach me how to lead as a servant leader. Teach me how to lead from the front. And that it becomes the problem because we don't have enough servant leaders. We don't have enough people. Nobody that even say, knows what that means anymore. Well, they have that's the thing is so the, poorly. Think of the best squadron commanders you ever had. They were the ones or, or skippers or whatever. They were the ones that could stand up in front of a room of fighter pilots. And at the end of whatever they said, you you said, I'm going to follow that dude in a combat yep, or, 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 or chick or whatever, ma'am, whatever it is, I would follow that person through the gates of hell because I know they're, they're credible. They are, uh, you know, they're not going to take me down a rabbit hole that, that's going to get me killed. And if they do, it's because it's the only way and that mission has to be. Because, out. you know, that's, that's mission it. failure, mission success. Yeah, You're right. absolutely right. Correct. I think we just have lost track of how to how to find leaders, in in, in just in general. I think it, it permeates because well, we don't train any leaders. Well, it's not just the military though; it's everywhere. Oh, it's 100%. everywhere. Everything. Everybody's is so afraid of hurting everybody's damn feelings. It's ridiculous. Yeah, what?